Hello everyone. So in this exercise, we are going to dig deep into how our Docker bridge is created and how the virtual Ethernet interfaces are established with the with the real internet interface like or network interface like I ETH zero. So to start with, you know, I you remember that we install Nginx, and so let's inspect what is there in the network from the Docker in the Docker from you. So there, there's a bridge called bridge that has been created. You can give whatever name you feel like for that. But Docker uses this convention of using bridge. You can see that you know the subnet is 172.17.0.0.16, and for this container, it has generated a MAC address. See, that's that's the beauty. So it has generated already generated a MAC address, and it has generated an IPv4 address. So the container which is running currently for Nginx has has the MAC ID of 0242ac11. 0002 and an IP address of uh, 172.17.02. So now let's let me run another Docker instance, right? So for the sudo docker run minus itd nginx. So it's spinning off a new instance, and now let's then ins inspect the network bridge. See now you have two entries here as against the as against one for two different containers. The new and latest container had this idea of F D E H C nine five five, and that's the this is the new container ID, and you can see that there's a new entry. There's a new IP address of one seventy two seventeen zero three, and it has generated a new MAC address as well. So, so the beauty here is let's if we come back to the diagram previously. The beauty here is Docker. The system has already created an um, independent MAC address for this one and a MAC address for this one. So the data for this VETH one with the local IP of 172.0.0.2 will receive this container instead of going to the container namespace two because that has a separate MAC address in the Docker convention. Now the next important point is how do you how does Docker place uh, an application into the into a network namespace? So let's to start with let's look at a simple program called simple network.c. So what I'm what am I doing here? In this program, what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a bridge called VETH0. At the parent level, which in our case will be analogous or synonymous to Docker, and then I'm creating a peer by name VETH1, and that's been associated to the network namespace with the PID of the child. So what this essentially means that you no know, VETH0 is one end of the pipe, and VETH1 is the other end of the pipe. Now, what happens is, if I if I and I, I come and give a IP address of 172.0.0.1 to VETH0, which essentially is analogous to the Docker uh, zero bridge or the bridge in our case, and I give an IP address of VETH1 to the to the virtual Ethernet interface running within the child, so. Now, when when we run this process, what we'll realize is the main process has access to all the all the Ethernet interfaces or the inter network interfaces, whereas the child process is just limited to VETH1. And since we have established a link between VETH0 on the parent side and VETH1 on the server, on the client on the child side. Any data that has to come to VETH1 will flow down through VETH0 and vice versa. So let's try this. CC simple network. G. So let's. Okay. 
So what you see here, oh sorry, I ran it as a... So let's see what happens here. Now in the parent process we have seen all those things. We Now the parent process is, see, is able to see something called docker 0 which is running on my machine and that has got nothing to do with this, this program. It has visibility to Eno1, I don't know what it is. It has access to the Allo, which is the loopback network interface. It has access to the VETH0, which we just created. It has access to the VETH17026, which Docker has created for that Nginx. And there's another one, which has which another one for the other container which Docker has created. And there are two virtual Ethernet interfaces created by the virtual box on my local machine and the WLO1 which is the wireless Ethernet interface that I'm using so there's no ETH0 in my case whereas in the child space you have access to the loopback and the VETH1 alone and I'm able to ping from the child namespace to the parent namespace so this the, essentially means that you know I've been able to connect VATH1 with VATH0 and this communication between VATH1 and VATH0 can happen seamlessly. Let's take a slightly more complex example of network namespace. This is a slightly more complex program that I've written. Now here what is happening is there's no network namespace you know so docker as we understand creates a network namespace and it associates that network namespace with the container or the other way around the container is associated container process is associated with the network namespace so we do the exact same thing so what i'm doing here is i'm looking for a namespace called namespace one and if it is already existing i delete that then you create a new namespace called namespace one and i list and see if the namespace one is has been created successfully or not and similar to the last exercise you know i establish a link between veth0 and veth1 so veth1 will decide in the child program which we're going to explore soon and veth0 will be on the in the parent program now we say that you know we put or rather link the veth1 with the namespace th that we created and we also say that you know we are going to assign the IP address 172.0.0.2 to VETH0 and bring that up and after that we assign the IP address of 172.0.0.0.1 to VETH1 and bring the uh, VETH1 up now the question that might be coming to your mind is you know why do I have to do it through a C program that's fair enough you know that's quite understandable the reason why I'm doing it is I wanted to show you that you know when the program actually clones itself using the clone command then what goes on under the hood so that's the primary uh, reason for why uh, for me using a C program to show these commands instead of you know uh, running it from the uh, from the shell so and then you know here what I'm doing is I'm getting uh, uh, to that namespace I'm getting a file descriptor so I'm opening that file and then I am putting this child process into that namespace so this is the programmatic way of doing it other than you know the way we did just a while back so both are possible and then I run this command so let's try this and see what happens So we have got almost similar results you know but you know this was more uh, more uh, to show you that how containers actually work so the way in which a docker container works is it for it to use networks or it to use the docker bridge it actually creates a namespace so I, it's, and the creation of the namespace as i showed is happening through the inet so IP NetNS. So this command is actually used internally by Docker to create the net network namespace, and 
then it associates as i showed you in that program in the child program it associates the container process that is newly generated with the ne network namespace and then it creates a bridge between the virtual interface running on locally on the on the container and a virtual ethernet interface running in docker and subsequently the communication happens as shown in this diagram so thank you for listening